this four of hero of precinct one big factor for Hobbs in a matchup like this? Oh, for sure. Here, Precinct 1 is a, a great card at playing both uh, offense against the control decks as well as defense against the aggressive decks. So uh, I, w I would expect it to play a reasonable part at buying Hobbs some time in uh, the early going. It's like Hobbs did win the die roll. Starts with Hinterland Harbor. Unger is going to play Basic Plains and a Sky Marcher Aspirant. Yeah, notably Hobbs, though, has these, uh, we call them check lands, where they check to see if you have a, a land type of one or the other. And... Normally, you want to start off with something like a tapped Hallowed Fountain or Breeding Pool and then follow it up with these check lines because otherwise they're just all going to enter the battlefield tap, which means you're going to be a turn behind your opponent for if they're a monocolor or a more consistent deck. Yeah, you saw Sun Petal Grove and now Glacial Fortress, as you mentioned, all entering taps. Unger had a Glacial Fortress that entered untap, cast an Adanto Vanguard. You see him now attacking for five. Looks like this will bump Hobbs down to 15. Uh, or 13. 13. Yeah, just a lot of damage coming through quick here. Uh, a really awesome start from Chris Unger. He's able to deploy four creatures in the first three turns. And if Hobbs doesn't have a sweeper effect in uh, just a turn or two, there's a good chance he is dead already. Yeah. And there's a second Sky Marcher Aspirant, Dauntless Bodyguard, protecting one of the Aspirants. Seven permanents towards the City's Blessing, but Hobbs with no blockers just yet. Here's something, maybe, Hero Precinct 1, but a fourth land entering tapped. Another Sun Petal Grove. Yeah, you see this a lot in standard with these three-color decks. People are often greedy with their keeps, and they'll keep a hand that has lands and spells, you know, uh, not really uh, aware of, of just how backbreaking it can be to have all these lands enter the battlefield tapped. And while Hobbs obviously uh, plays a lot of standard, is quite a good player, um, he didn't know his opponent was necessarily on Azorius aggro, and he's basically getting maximally punished for this really slow start. There was an attempt at Teferi Time Raveler for Unger. Hobbs was at the ready with a Spell Pierce, so he was able to use his mana, but he's going to take this big hit down to four as we go back Hobbs' way. He needs to get some gold spells cast, get some tokens to block. Oh, absolutely, but if he does, uh, there's a chance he shuts down the entirety of Chris Unger's aggression here. Uh, Chris only has seven permanents, which means he doesn't quite have the City's Blessing, and that also means that Sky Marcher Aspirant doesn't have flying, so these 1-1 one, one bodies created by Hero Precinct 1 can potentially uh, be uh, backbreaking to this army of X1 creatures that he does have. Here's Hydroid Crasis X equals 2. That's a gold spell that'll bring a token, gain a life up to 5, and draw a card. Yeah, the life actually pretty relevant here against an army of 2 power creatures. Going to 5 means that all he has to do basically is chump block the Adana Vanguard and then block one other creature, and he can still survive, which means he might get to keep his Hero Precinct 1 around for at least one more turn. Hinterland Harbor was the land once again. Land entering tap. Probably wasn't going to use that mana anyway. We go back to Unger. Has a fourth mana source. It's another planes. And here's Conclave Tribunal and Hero Precinct 1. That is a really big swing in his favor. Yeah, and now he shoves in. There has to be a chump block on the Adanto Vanguard. And then a trade with another creature sending Hobbs down to 1. With no creatures versus 3. So he's going to need a really swingy card on the following turn. So the token's going to eat the Dauntless Bodyguard. Krasis jumps in front of Adanto Vanguard. That's going to get eaten and a Looks like Unger has paid the four life. He'll go to 16, make that indestructible. Yeah, uh, even something like Time Wipe here is not going to get the job done because the Adanto Vanguard uh, is uh, ha has the ability to gain indestructible. Hobbs is going to need settle the wreckage exactly. Potentially could play a second hero precinct one and something like a frilled Mystic to provide himself with three blockers, but. Uh, let's see if he has it. He does play two Angel of Grace, so he could buy another turn that way with that into the battlefield effect. Sure, that's a really great point, and if he does have that, it could give him one more turn to find the answer. Here's Legion's Landing pre-combat for Unger. Three creatures were already at the ready, so that should be transforming right away here. Well, looks like Hobbs actually does have that Angel of Grace, so we might actually have a real game on our hands. Let's see what happens. So here's an attack with the two Aspirants, the Adanto Vanguard, Transform Allegiance Landing, and here is Angel of Grace. That should jump in front of something here. Yeah, and this should give Unger the uh, City's Blessing as well. Um, so those uh, Sentence do have uh, flying, but our Aspirants do have flying, but uh, not a huge deal since a lot of Hobbs creatures also fly, especially the Angel of Grace. And the Angel will eat one of the Aspirants. Uh, the Enter the Battlefield effect for the Angel of Grace is going to keep Hobbs at one. 
We'll see if there's any follow-up, though Unger likely just to hang out and with this Adanto, the first forward activation here, especially against an opponent on one. That's pretty dang good. Yeah, the uh, the one one's generally not a huge impact, but over time in a really attrition-based matchup or with your opponent just on a super low life total, every one one you make is potentially lethal in this spot. So it's going to require a significant amount of answers or one very specific answer from Hobbs. Yeah, largely use that turn. Really needed to draw something like Settle the Wreckage here. He has to clean up this battlefield. Yeah, but he does only play one copy in the main deck to kind of give him that mize uh, in, in certain spots that the opponent might not be expecting it. I know one of the cards he's been hanging out with in hand is a Frilled Mystic. He has some mana to fairy. That stuff really doesn't play here. Yeah, the Frilled Mystic, uh, I think uh, Emma Handy is uh, famous ish recently for calling it a win more card. And I am inclined to agree in, in a lot of respects. Well, here's the Fairy Time Reveler that's going to bounce Conclave Tribunal, draw Hobbs a card, return Hero Precinct 1 to the battlefield. This could maybe allow him to make some tokens and have some good blocks again. Now, I think the problem is his only land is a Shock Lane in Breeding Pool, so can't play that Frilled Mystic and generate a fourth blocker without shocking. Growth Spiral here, though, uh, could potentially find an untapped land and, and maybe play a second spell, but it is not to be. Game one goes to Unger. Yeah, the uh, Adanto is just a little bit too much for Obs to recover from. With a little bit more time, you know, theoretically, Hero can just keep pace with that, but Chris Unger is going to be your winner in game one. Yeah, I mean, Hero Precinct 1 is, is quite good at playing defense, and uh, Unger, though, had the answer with Conclave Tribunal in a key spot. Jonathan Hobbs did have that stumble early on with all his lands entering the battlefield tapped, and a, a pretty clean-cut win for Azorius Aggro in there, just uh, trying to close out all the potential outs for Hobbs over um, you know, the last few attack steps. So now down a game, down a game, Hobbs is going to look to the sideboard, the oh, options Dylan, he has. Dylan, down a game. <laughs> He's usually up a game. Yeah, anyway, sure. Jonathan Hobbs, three Knight of Autumn, two Baffling N, two Dovin's Veto, two Narset, Parter of Veils, a Settled Wreckage, a Shalai, Voice of Plenty, the Wanderer, Tulsimir, Friend of Wolves, Single Combat, and Ugin the Ineffable. Alrighty, so it looks like uh, we do have Cardboard Live up and running for these two players. So if you want to see their main decks as well, make sure to click on that extension. It works on mobile as well. Uh, click that little puzzle piece next to the, uh, the chat. But as far as how we're going to sideboard here, Jonathan Hobbs needs to lower his curve a bit. I would be looking to get things like Frilled Mystic out of my deck. Um, you want a lot of removal and not a lot of these situational cards that are good against control. Uh, so some of the counter spells come out, I think. The Frilled Mystic comes out. And you want to bring in stuff like Baffling In. Knight of Autumn actually is pretty good in a lot of spots. It can buy you some time by gaining life, but kills Conclave Tribunal, kills um, the uh, Legion's Landing before it can transform. Uh, so it's it's a pretty versatile card in the matchup. Baffling In definitely comes in. Uh, Settle the Wreckage, yeah, I want it. Uh, Tulsimir, Friend of Wolves, generates two bodies, which I like, as well as potentially fights off one of those two-power creatures, so I do like that. And then maybe the Ugin the Ineffable, because it's a, a pretty, um, you know, generic answer to a lot of weird permanents. But it can also just generate a bunch of 2-2 two -two bodies, which over time will overwhelm the, the Azorius aggro and their, you know, uh, top of the deck is usually just a bunch of two power creatures anyway. So the cyborg for Chris Unger then, four baffling in, two deputy of detention, two Dovin's veto, two spell pierce, a demystify, a disdainful stroke, Gideon Blackblade, a Teferi Time Raveler, and an island. Yeah, so Teferi Time Raveler is quite good against decks that try to play mostly at instant speed. So I'd be looking to get that into the deck to complement the two that are already in the main. Um, I like Planeswalkers in general because they avoid those sweepers that you kind of have to expect. Though Chris Unger may not be aware that uh, Hobbs's list is uh, just a single time wipe and then two settle the wreckage between main and sideboard. So he may uh, put a little more value on Gideon Blackblade than he should. Now, uh, as far as the other things, I love the spell pierces. The Disdainful Stroke is probably pretty good. Um, Probably want to bring in the island as well, since you're bringing in some blue cards, as well as those Dovin's Veto. But I would leave most of the removal at home, even though you saw some creatures like Hero Precinct 1 uh, and, and Angel of Grace. I think you just have to be low to the ground, all creatures, and a couple counter spells to close out the game when your opponent tries to go for a 4 or 5 man sweeper. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, how do you feel about free content, Todd? I mean, I generate uh, plenty of content, but it ain't free. Well, oh, I'm sorry, I lied. 
a lot of my content is free. You do have the, people are literally watching versus a free to watch live. show right now versus live. Right. And then you can check out the Star City Games newsletter. Free to subscribe to. Go to starcitygames.com slash newsletter. You get highlights from some of our best articles like Todd Anderson's. Upcoming SCG tour dates and locations like Louisville coming up next weekend. That's yeah. modern. Star City Games Invitational Qualifiers near you. We get you ready to come out to SCG Con Summer. That's coming up. Play the Invitational there. And uh, find out about game nights near you. Yeah, and with uh, kind of the death of the PPTQ system, there is a, a pretty wide uh, gap being left behind by by that program. So I'm really hoping the Invitational Qualifiers pick up uh, in, in local stores. So if uh, you want to check out an Invitational Qualifier uh, near you, make sure to go to uh, go to starcitygames.com slash newsletter, and you can see all those pretty easily. My first Invitational Qualification was from an IQ. Yeah. Mine was from being a writer, so it doesn't really count. <laughs> but I have been writing for Star City Games before the SCG Tour was a thing. Even before SCG... No, maybe SCG Live was a thing already. 2009. I know that uh, Evan Irwin used to run... Uh, he, I, I don't know if he called them Opens. I think he just called them 5Ks. So around that era, I recall... There was a tournament series that uh, I showed up to. It was called the Midwest Master Series. Okay. It was broadcast on GG's Live. Oh, yeah. GG's Live is tight. Or it was, was tight. Is tight? I don't know. Uh, and it was like Justin.tv. <laughs> well, Justin TV was what Twitch became. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it used to be different. It's been Twitch for some time, though. But, I mean, uh, as long as I have been paying attention to it. I used to think people streaming video games was stupid now wow. now no no i know and now i literally watch twitch probably 20 hours a week <laughs> yeah same i mean a lot of times i'll just watch someone play a video game while i'm playing a video game so you know there it is law right, rune enforcer here from chris unger to start things off hobbs with a shock land luckily so all of his lands going to be entering the battlefield untapped even though he's got to pay a little bit of life for him yeah, this time he's on all shocks. He'll shock down to 18 to cast Hero Precinct 1. Tapping that with the Law Rune Enforcer doesn't really accomplish very much. Unger off to a pretty slow start. Here's a Snub Horde Sentry and a Glacial Fortress. No good attacks. Yeah, uh, one uh, thing to be aware of, Hobbs did choose to leave in some number of Spell Pierce in his deck, so I'm curious how that's going to affect this game, because Unger here, if he has History Benali, probably going to slam it, and Pierce going to be very good. But if it's something like Benalf Marshall, Spell Pierce becomes a lot worse. Yeah, Marshall could be a big factor here. Let's see exactly what he has. He does have the third land, and it is Benalf Marshall. Hobbs not good at interacting with that one on the stack. No, he has a growth spiral. Uh, he may be like bluffing a counter spell here. Um, and now Chris Unger has to decide, well, do I actually attack? Because Hobbs gets to go growth spiral and then maybe even double block and kill the Law Rune Enforcer. Make that trade. I wouldn't mind it. So there is an attack with the Enforcer. Hobbs will play growth spiral, put in a breeding pool, make a 1-1, and he'll take the 2 down to 16. Yeah, and with a handful of multicolor cards, you don't want to trade Law Rune Enforcer for Hero Precinct 1. Uh, Hobbs has access to... Deputy Detention, uh, maybe even a Baffling in here. So it's got some ways to check that Banalish Marshal and maybe check it while generating uh, extra creatures from here at Precinct 1. So there's Baffling in on the Marshal. That'll be exiled. It's kind of funny for a Hero Precinct 1 deck. He does play a lot of monocolored spells. Yeah, I mean, it's it's more of a, a Grizzly Bear that occasionally generates an extra 1-1 one, one or 2. Um, the Baffling Ends, I believe, are uh, half and half, two main, two wards. So, yep. um, you know, even though he's not the full-blown, like, the Esper, controlled, or Esper mid-range decks that play, um, you know, 27 multicolor spells, he still has somewhere around 20, which is a pretty fine number, if you ask me. Yeah, so he's another monocolored spell. Unger is going to go for a Teferi. Hobbs will spell pierce that. And so now Unger just has that 1-2 in the 0-3, not really doing anything just yet. Yeah, and this is exactly where Hobbs wants to be. He had the answer to the Teferi. Let's see if he has an answer to a second one. It looks like that one's going to be good. Yeah, and now uh, Hobbs is unable to play anything on Unger's turn, so if he wants, he can bounce that token. Ooh, he's going to bounce the Baffling in and draw. Ooh, maybe not. Yeah, so uh, Baffling End is a weird removal spell because yeah, it, it gives you a 3-3, three, three, not the creature back when it leaves the battlefield. So Unger would like to have a Banalish Marshal, wouldn't really care for a dinosaur. He's going to bounce for the hero Precinct 1 instead. 
Yeah, I, I actually think I might uh, want to bounce the token over the hero. At this point, Hobbs has a ton of mana, not a whole lot to do. And I think you just have to assume that his hand is mostly air or just removal spells that don't really look very good against uh, your side of the board. And I would much rather uh, get rid of something permanently instead of something just for a turn, personally. So, so the play for Hobbs, it's going to be two Hero Precincts ones, replay the other one and a new, new copy. Deputy Detention for Unger that's going to exile both of the heroes. It's a pretty big tempo swing, and when you have Teferi Time Raveler on the battlefield, you don't have to be afraid of counter spells. You don't have to be afraid of your Deputy Detention dying on the end step and then getting those creatures back to attack your Planeswalker. Here's a second Law Rune Enforcer, an attack for one. One point shy, one permanent shy of the City's Blessing, so no Sentry attacks just yet, but Hobbs will go down to 14. And now he'll cast a Deputy Detention of his own, exiling Unger's Deputy, getting back those heroes. Great. So I'm pretty sure uh, Deputy is a one-sided effect. Like, if both players control Deputy, it doesn't create, like, an infinite loop when you target your opponents or whatever. Um, so it's, it's kind of this weird interaction that's a little bit different from something like Detention Sphere, where it hits all cards with the same name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just opponent's stuff. And here's another Deputy. Two tokens, and get rid of those Larun Enforcers. That now Unger, turn. very far off the City's Blessing. Yeah, I went from nine permanents down to six. Yep. Lost his own deputy, which gave two heroes back to Hobbs. And now we just have this weird <laughs> bounce war, and I hate it. Well, this is going to be a Thanks. huge swing. Baffling in. Get back my deputy. Deputy target. Probably your deputy, but there's an argument for the other permanents, actually. Yeah, I mean, you could just knock off all the tokens if you want and just hope to potentially draw something to check the deputy later on. But you still have to worry about all these hero precinct ones over the next few turns, so... You know, this is uh, more of a, a race, I think, for Unger to try to just get to 10 permanents and protect that to Ferry for at least one more turn. So he ended up grabbing the deputy. He gets his Law Rune Enforcers back. He now has a City's Blessing and a History of Banalia as well. Yeah, so a pretty good turn here for Unger. He basically uh, undoes most of the damage done on the previous turn. And as a Conclave Tribunal. Okay, so here he can Conclave Tribunal. Um, and take care of the Baffling Inn, which will give him a 3-3 Dinosaur token. Or he can permanently knock off one of these Heroes of Precinct 1. He takes a Hero of Precinct 1 here. It definitely makes sense if Hobbs does stuff like cast a bunch of growth spirals that can really get out of hand. Right. And that's kind of the strength of the card in Hobbs' deck. Especially playing an instant speed, but that Teferi kind of shutting that down at the moment. So we'll go back to Hobbs. He has a land in hand, and I believe the only spell is an angel's, uh, Angel of Grace. Yeah. So he's going to basically trade Hero Precinct 1 here to eat the Teferi Time Raveler. That's going to unlock his uh, Angel of Grace from hand, allow him to just basically play a 5-4 at instant speed and potentially uh, uh, mess up combat for Unger. Let's see if Unger plays around it. We go back Unger's way. Ton of creatures to Hobbs just with those three tap tokens and a bunch of lands. We'll see how aggressive he gets if he pays mind to something like a potential settle the wreckage. Yeah, I mean, he's got to worry about settle. He's got to worry about Angel of Grace. He saw Angel of Grace last game, so I would not be surprised if he leaves back one Law Rune Enforcer just for Angel of Grace uh, and also maybe leaves back one extra creature just so he doesn't get completely blown out by a settle the wreckage. But looks like he's going to play just around Angel of Grace, and I think that's a fine play. So it looks like Subhort Century. La Rune Enforcer, Deputy Detention, and the Old Knight token coming in. Yeah, it's a swing for seven right now. Uh, Hobbs has no real defense other than the Angel of Grace. Might want to save it uh, to act as more of a fog in a turn or two once um, uh, Unger is attacking for lethal. But this is a, it's a fine spot to play it now just because you start to tie up the mana from, from Unger a little bit. But he's got five, so... You know, it's possible that just the fog effect later on might be slightly better. Mm -hmm. You'd like to get those tappers off the battlefield before you cast the angel so you can maybe eat something. Though he is a mana shy of something like another deputy attention plus the angel. Yeah, that's true. And uh, the longer you leave those expensive cards in hand, the harder it becomes to double spell or even triple spell down the line. So, you know, 
there there are ramifications for not playing it there. But you know, the the upside is that he may maybe buys himself a full extra turn, and that's a pretty good plus. Uh, for, for waiting when it's just going to get tapped down by that Law Rune Enforcer anyway. Yeah, definitely. So Hobbs just no action, takes the hit, down to seven. We'll go back his way. So now he has these three tokens that are untapped, and you can't actually tap them with Law Rune Enforcer. Yep. Kind of a cool design. can only tap creatures with mana cost two or more. Yeah, and I think that's mostly a, a nod to the zombie army tokens in Limited more than anything, which is pretty cool. But yeah, not being able to tap Dragon Token from Sarkin, Kazmina Token, uh, or these tokens that uh, Hero Precinct 1 makes makes, them, makes it a little bit worse than something like um, Gideon's Lawkeeper. Mm -hmm. But that two toughness is notably awesome against uh, Goblin Chain Warrior. So here is a Knight of Autumn for Hobbs. He's going to take care of the history of Benalia so it won't give the Anthem effect on Chapter 3. Hunger will tap that at the end step and we'll go back his way. I actually believe that a big motivation for Law Rune Enforcer is that you can't use it to tap opponents' Law Rune Enforcers. Sure, you know. I guess that, that was a really tricky part of those tappers back in the day. When it came to limited, a lot of times you would just, like, keep your opponent's one in check until it was your turn to attack for lethal, and then you would just, like, tap all of their blockers and then on your turn or something. So it does simplify things quite a bit, which I like. Once again, Unger thinking about maybe some pre-combat action, thinking about what to attack with, and he lands in a swing with everything but deputy attention. So we have both Lauren Enforcers, both Knight Tokens, Snubhorn and Sentry, they're all coming in. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a chunk of damage Hobbs going to have to make a block here to not die. I'm curious if he goes for any double blocking or just goes triple chumps. Maybe a double block on a Lauren and a chump on a Snubhorn, taking five down to two. Gets one of those uh, law runes off the battlefield. Yeah, double block on law rune enforcer. Block on snubboard sentry is what he's lining up here. Once again, has not deployed the Angel of Grace. Looks to very much be valuable. Oh, he only has four mana here. Sorry, he tapped low for the Knight of Autumn. So yeah, he'll I'm, be able to hang on with that anyway. Yeah, the exact thing you said where he drew a three drop, so he couldn't play the three drop and the Angel of Grace in the same turn. But he's not going to die here. He's only going to take five. He's going to go down to two. He's going to be left with one, uh, one, one token after it's all said and done. And he's going to untap with an Angel of Grace. So he's going to basically be able to buy himself one free turn. So after that, one Law Rune Enforcer down, two tokens down, Hobbs down to two. And it's going to be his turn. No follow-up for Unger. Though he has plenty of stuff on the battlefield as it stands. All right, Hobbs tapping two mana. Hero Precinct 1. So he can cast this, and he still has Angel of Grace, Grace mana at the ready. Now, this does slightly disguise his Angel of Grace. Um, you know, he could have been holding on to something like Frilled Mystic for a while because the one turn where uh, uh, Unger basically was afraid of, of the Angel of Grace, um, there, there was some mana left up and no spells cast, basically. So. So you use Lawn Reinforcer, tap down the hero, attack with Sentry, two Knight Tokens. Before blocks, Hobbs is going to flash in that Angel of Grace. We'll go to blocks. Looks like he'll trade Knight of Autumn with a Knight Token. Angel of Grace is going to eat the Sentry, and this two damage is going to knock him down to one. Yeah, and uh, much like the card Angel's Grace <laughs> that uh, sees Modern play in the Ad Nauseam deck, uh, that static effect of you don't die this turn and you go to one if you would take lethal damage, uh, attached to a 5-4 flying creature with uh, Flash. So, pretty powerful effect here. And off the top, we have a Hydroid Crisis. Hobbs is taking over now. Yeah, gain two life, draw two cards. He'll go up to three. That 5-5 five, five Flyer is definitely huge. Plays another land tap, Temple Garden, and we'll go back Unger's way. Unger did cast a replacement Sumport Sentry on the previous turn, but now he's facing down a lot of blockers. The life cushion also significant when a lot of your creatures only have one or two power. Right. Now, we talked about that a little bit last game where he was able to make uh, certain blocks to potentially stay at one life through attacks. But in this scenario, I don't think he's going to have nearly enough juice to, to fight through all this stuff. I will say this. I'm actually kind of surprised Hobbs chose to trade uh, Knight of Autumn with... A 2-2 two -two Knight instead of the Law Rune Enforcer, I believe. Oh, no, it didn't attack that turn. Yeah, never mind. It, it, it My apologies. the uh, hero. Yeah, never mind. My bad. 
but Law Enforcer could play uh, a spoil here. Hobbs has to play defense, and because of that Law Enforcer's ability to potentially tap two creatures, there's a chance that he just attacks with nothing. Yeah. So Unger, no spells cast, no attacks. He passes back to Hobbs. We see him on tap. He'll play a Temple Garden. So it looks like his draws have largely been lands. Unger and Steps going to tap down the Angel of Grace. Now we'll go to his turn. Yeah, Unger here uh, in a bit of trouble. A couple of spells off the top might help him. Spell Pierce, not really what he's looking for I here, though. Unger has Disdainful Stroke in hand. That could be a game changer if that is what he has. Here's Dauntless Bodyguard that'll protect the Snubhorn Sentry. And looks like he's going for a tap. It's going to tap the Hydroid Krasis. So now Hobbs on tap creature. He has the hero and two tokens. Unger's looking at a Sentry, a Knight token, and the Deputy Detention if he wanted to throw that there in the is. field. There it is. All right. It is a Disdainful Stroke, so that's a pretty huge card to have right here. Hobbs's next big play is going to get checked. So the attack's going to be just Snubhorn Sentry. Hobbs will chump block with a token. We'll go back Hobbs' way. Yeah, but, you know, the, the turns, basically this takes a full turn cycle every time that Unger wants to tap something, untap, then tap something again. Actually, it takes two turn cycles. Crazy. So there was Tulsimer. There's Disdainful Stroke. Tulsimer not going to resolve. Woof. Would have been a big hit had it resolved, but Unger was ready for that. Yeah, and that Disdainful Stroke playing a huge spot there. It's basically the only counterspell in Unger's deck that could have gotten the job done in that particular spot. You know, sometimes the Sandful Stroke is just nutty. Notably, the context of this turn a little bit different than last turn because the Enforcer was tapped on Unger's turn. But uh, Ob's still not really in a position to attack, just plays Hollow Fountain and passes. Yeah, I mean, if he does decide to attack with one or even two of his big flyers, then Unger uh, has to be a little more defensive with his Law Enforcer. And with three blockers, I actually kind of like just smashing in for 10 personally. You just put Unger in a really weird spot that he might not be able to get out of. We'll find out. Uh, yeah, I know that Unger, I think he was holding on to he might two lands die. otherwise. Yeah, either way. yeah if, if he, he had a couple cards, so there was reason for Hobbs to be suspicious of something. How about something like this, Deputy Detention, that's going to take care of those tokens? Lottery Enforcer, that's going to tap in the main phase. Angel of Grace tapped down. And this is everybody's coming lethal. in. If Hobbs has nothing, that's game, and that's the match. Chris Unger, a 2-0 win over Jonathan Hobbs. He will advance to 7-0 here at the Standard Open at SCG Syracuse. Jonathan